Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Our beloved fathers, deacons, monks, nuns, and our beloved faithfuls who are with us in this Holy Sunday celebrating the Holy Mass, the true body and the true blood of Christ. And those who are watching us through live streaming, we pray that you are always in good health and in good spirit. Amen. We thank our Lord always. We praise his holy name always. We glorify his holy name and we worship him always, my beloveds. In good times, in bad times, in sickness and in health, in poorness and in richness, in weakness and in strength, in tribulations, in comfort, we thank, we praise, and we glorify and worship the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord of all and the King of all kings, God revealed in the flesh. Amen. The Gospel of today, my beloveds, is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, um, chapter 18, from verse 35 to chapter 19, verse 10. See, the church fathers <clears throat> have chosen certain readings or scriptural passages that is relevant to that particular Sunday in the church calendar. So the Holy Gospel that we read during the Holy Mass service, it is actually chosen from different parts within the Holy Bible that is made relevant for the day, for the feast, and whatever the occasion is on that particular Sunday and or any other days. So today's gospel is a combination of Luke chapter 18 and 19. So it's Luke 18 from verse 35 all the way till the end of it, and then Luke 19 from verses 1 to 10 inclusive. The Lord Jesus is trying to teach us something that is absolutely foundational for our spiritual life. In these passages, or in this reading from the Holy Gospel, the Lord Jesus was going through Jericho. He met a blind man sitting on the, on the side of the road. And then this blind man heard there was a lot of crowds and there was a lot of no, you know, crying of people and chanting and praising. So he asked, he said, what is happening? They said, it is Jesus Christ of Nazareth passing by. So he cried out and said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then the Lord stopped and asked to be brought to him. And when he was brought to the Lord, the Lord asked him this question, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, I want to see. I want to regain my eyesight. The Lord said, your faith has delivered you, and he saw on the spot. He continued going into Jericho, and there was this chief tax collector named Zacchaeus. He was dying to meet the Lord Jesus. He's heard a lot about him, and it is the first time ever to have an absolute close encounter with the Lord. Tried frantically to see him because of the crowds. He was unable to see the Lord as the Holy Bible reveals the reason why for he was small of stature. He was short in height. So he could not see the Lord. But he said, I'm not going to give up. So he ran ahead and found sycamore tree. He climbed up on that tree. And as the Lord was passing by, looked at him and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly. Come on in haste. And today I must be in your house. And as the Lord went into Zacchaeus' house, 
Zacchaeus, out of joy and happiness, stood up before everyone and before the Lord, of course, and said, Lord, I will give half of my wealth to the needy people. And if anyone whom I have defrauded once, I'll pay that person back four folds moreover. The Lord said, today a new life has been written and given to this house. For this is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man uh, came to save those who are lost. Two events, two situations, one a blind man, the other one a tax collector and a chief tax collector short in stature. What is the gospel of today trying to tell us and teach us all? The Lord is saying there are two things that become an obstacle and a hindrance to you reaching the Lord Jesus. One, blindness. Two, shortness of height. These two obstacles are a hindrance to reaching the Lord. See, the Lord is not talking about a physical blindness. He's not talking about a physical uh, short stature. The Lord is talking in the spiritual sense. You can be as tall as you want. You can be as short as you can be. You can be skinny, big built, fat, white, black, yellow, whatever color you want to be, let that be. Because since God has created you the way you are, He chose for you to be in this specific way. God will not come back and blame you for what you are and how you are. This is the way He created you and this is the way He is happy with. However, the Lord Jesus is saying, I need you to come and understand how to live for me in the spiritual sense in order to reach me, be with me, and follow in my footprints. Number one, if you are spiritually blind and if you are spiritually short in stature, you will not be able to see the Lord. You will not be able to reach the Lord. You will not be able to be with the Lord. What is stopping us is that spiritual blindness and shortness in stature spiritually. See, when this man cried out, when this man cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. There would have been probably hundreds of people shouting and praising the Lord, if not thousands of people. The question is, this is one person crying out to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. How can one voice be heard in the midst of thousands shouting and yelling, oh, praise be the name of Jesus Christ? How can that voice be heard? But you see, to us it is not heard, but to the Lord it is. For the Lord does not look and hear and listen to the voice that is coming out of your mouth. He listens to the voice and the cry that comes out of the depth of your heart. The Lord Jesus is the God of the heart, not of the lips. Because those people who were shouting and praising the Lord, they were the same people who crucified Him and said, crucify Him, crucify Him later on. But you see, there was one man in the midst of those thousands that cried out to Jesus Christ from the heart, not from the lips. The Lord is saying, do you want to have an encounter with me? You must call me from the heart, not from the lips. You must call me from the heart, not from your lips. In other words, when you come to my holy house, 
For what reason are you coming? For what intention are you seeking? What is the basis for you coming to church? Are you coming to church to see what is happening? To hear some new news? Or even to gain some information about what this passage is all about? Is it about information gathering? Is coming to church about socializing and making friends? Is coming to church all about um, my, own, my own intentions? Or am I coming to the house of the Lord for the sake of the Lord? Is He the only reason? Is He the first and the last reason why I am coming to church? If a blind man approaches me and I ask him, what do you want me to do for you? What would be the logical reply of that blind man? I don't think that blind man will say, can you get me a sandwich? Can you get me a new shirt or a new pants? Obviously and logically, when you ask a blind man, what do you want me to do for you? He will say the most important and the, the, the biggest thing he has been seeking all his life, I want to see again. It is a logical answer. So what are you asking? What do you want? Can't you see I'm blind? Of course I want to see again. Now as a human so weak and miserable like me, knowing that this blind man would reply and say, I want a pair of eyes, then how much more the Lord Jesus would know what this blind man wants. Since Jesus Christ is God revealed in the flesh, He knows us more than ourselves. And He knows what we will be thinking later on before we know it. Then when Jesus asks a question, that question is meant for us, not for Him. A rhetorical question is a question that has an answer in it. See, God is in no need of asking a question. Why? Because God knows everything. But the reason why we ask questions, because we don't know everything, and the only way for us to get to know, to find out, is by asking questions. So the question that is asked to us by Christ is for our own enlightenment, for our own understanding. The Lord asks this blind man, what do you want me to do for you? He was waiting for the correct reply from that blind man in order for Christ to be glorified in his life. That blind man's reply was, Lord, I want to see. I want to see, he was not seeking a physical sight being restored. He was seeking a spiritual sight to be restored to him. He was saying literally to the Lord Jesus, Lord, I want to see you. I want to get to know you. I want you, Lord Jesus. That was the reason why Jesus stopped in the first place and said to his disciples, go and call this man to me. Because the Lord knew from his cry, son of David, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. From that cry, the Lord realized this man came for the right intention. This man was seeking Christ and Christ alone. That's what made Jesus stop. If you cry out to the Lord Jesus for the wrong reasons, the Lord hears you not. If you pray and beg the Lord Jesus for other intentions outside of Him, the Lord will not acknowledge you no matter how many times you cry out to Him. The Lord wants you to understand one thing. He wants us all to understand one thing. When you ask something, don't ever ask something that is temporal. Always ask something that is eternal. 
You see, if this man asked for his physical eyes to be restored, guess what? How many more years was this man going to live? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, no matter how long those years are, when you compare any number to eternity, it is zero. Any number compared to eternity is zero, is nothing. Because what can you compare to something that has no beginning and no end? Everything is zero next to eternity. So the Lord Jesus says, if you ask for temporal things, guess what? Death will take it away from you. I restored this man's eyes. After a few years, he would have died and those eyes would have shut again. What did he gain? Nothing. But when he asked to see me, his eyesight was opened always forever. Seek what is eternal, not what is temporal. I'm not saying you do not ask for temporal, temporal things. However, don't ever make temporal things your priority with the Lord. He won't give it to you. He won't. You know why he won't? Because he loves you and he cares for you and he's extremely concerned when you're seeking temporal things first. Your heart is in the wrong place, not in the right place. So don't come to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to pass the exam. And you fail the exam and you say, Lord, you know what? I asked you for me to pass the exam and I failed. You know, I'm not going to pray anymore. I'm not going to ask you. I'm not going to go to church anymore. I said to you specifically, I want to pass the exam. Didn't you say, ask and it shall be given to you? Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall open. Well, I came and did as you taught me. Where are you then? I failed. Thank you, Jesus, for your kindness. The Lord is going to say, hang on a sec, my child. Which exam are you focusing on? Is it your physics? Is it your mathematics? What kind of an exam are you seeking? I want you to come and ask me, Lord, I want to pass the exam that is going to make me graduate in your university. I'm going to graduate out of your university. I want to pass so that I can make it to your kingdom. Allow me to pass all the exams that come from you, Lord, not from some professor in university that could be an atheist. You passed the exam and you became a doctor and you became a scientist and you became a lawyer and a teacher and an engineer and then what? My advice to every mom and dad, my advice to every mom and dad, don't ever, don't ever focus on your children's future here on earth and make it as the number one priority. The priority is your children are to have the fear of the Lord, not just to be scientists, professors, and doctors. What does it benefit a man if he gains the whole world and then loses himself at the end? So what? I'm a doctor, but I am a godless doctor. What does that benefit me? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. I have seen so many parents trying so frantically to persuade their son or their daughter to become a doctor and a lawyer because this is a prestigious achievement in society. Big deal. Big deal. Why aren't you trying so frantically to raise your child to say, Jesus Christ is my only sweetheart, even if I end up being a cleaner? That is my glory. I don't need to be a king and lose Christ. I'd rather be 
the cleaner and has Christ at the end. Yes, study, work hard, achieve, beautiful, but to glorify the Lord, not yourself, not anyone else. Glorify the Lord. What kind of a question are we asking the Lord? Because I'm telling you, unless it is meant for him, the Lord is not going to stop. He will continue walking. Lord, I want to be a bishop. Please make me a bishop. Why? Because my intention is, it feels good. So many people will come and say, Your Grace, how are you? They bow and kiss the hand or they salute with respect. And people come and listen to me. Wow, Lord, I want to be a bishop. There is authority. I can tell this guy, go and tell that guy, come here. I have authority. You have nothing, my dear friend. If Jesus does not give you the authority, you have nothing. Oh, you can do whatever you want, only for a short time. Jesus is waiting for you. No one, no one can do whatever they want. No one, my beloved. Ask the right question for the right reason. You see, the spiritual blindness is what we are witnessing in our very 21st century. The human race of the 21st century, their problem is spiritual blindness. Their dilemma is that spiritual blindness. They're not knowing what they want. You know when, when somebody has no idea what they want, but they keep on jumping up and down and going and coming and make a fuss and a big deal with, about everything? You know, a person that is not steady, that is not stable, that is not quiet and calm, is someone that has lost their sense of direction. A spiritual blindness, what does it do? Makes you living in chaos. There is no peace. There is no tranquility. There is no serenity. There is no clarity in your life. You don't know what you want. And you don't know what makes you happy. You have no idea what makes you content. You buy this, you throw it. You get this, you don't want it. You're, you're married, you're not happy. Not married, not happy. What makes you happy? Money, wealth, fame, power. What do you want? See, because we are seeking all the things that are outside of Jesus Christ. Christ is not the center of attention. Christ is not our goal and objective. And as long as we seek things outside of Christ, we will always be spiritually blind. The world is living in a spiritual blindness. And when the world lives in a spiritual blindness, that spiritual blindness, where is that going to lead? To a short stature. Blindness leads to lack of growth. There is no growth. I'm short. I'm talking spiritually here. I'm short. There is no growth. And being short in my spirituality, I'm looking to find the Lord. I can't find him. Why? Because he is surrounded by saints and I'm the sinner. Well, there is no, there is no communion between saints and sinners. Because saints live in the light and sinners live in the darkness. And there is no connection between light and darkness. It is either light or it is darkness. So when I'm spiritually short, trying frantically to see the Lord Jesus. Can't see him. There are others who are much taller than I in the spiritual life. They've blocked the view. Lord, I'm here. Sorry, can't see you. 
Spiritual blindness leads to being short in stature. What causes spiritual blindness? What causes it? Me. Me, 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 me. I want to do things my way. It is me who wants this. It is me who built this. It is me who did this. It is me who achieved this. Me, me, me. This me will keep you blind all your life spiritually. The moment you start letting go of me, 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 Christ begins to live in you. When Christ begins to live in you, your spiritual sight is being restored and you'll start seeing very clearly. The moment you, the Lord opens your spiritual sight, the first person you're going to see is Jesus Christ. And then you're going to look back on how you used to live before. And you'll say, how blind was I when I lived in a such rebellious way? Where was my brain? Where was my head? Where was my intelligence that I used to be boastful of? Hey, nobody tells me what to do. I know everything. I am the educated one. I have PhD in this and that. But you are blind because all the knowledge of the world will not make you see Christ. It is that humility before Jesus Christ that will make you see him. You must be humble. And humility is the beginning to humility is when you start realizing that you are a sinner. Not a saint, sinner. There is some new ideas in recent years floating around. Jesus made me a saint, I'm a saint. Well done. Don't say you're a sinner. Jesus made you saint. Are you? Jesus wants you to be a saint. But the question, are you? There is a part that has to be fulfilled from our side. Not everything is of the Lord. Also, I have to fulfill certain things. If I do not humble myself before the Lord, if I do not acknowledge my wrongdoings, if I do not acknowledge that I am an, a weak instrument always, if I do not acknowledge that I am a sinner in my human nature that is corrupt, I will not be humble. There is a difference between saying to myself I'm a sinner and between losing hope of salvation. There is a fine line between them. I will never lose hope of my salvation because of the promise Christ made and gave me. However, I need to acknowledge that I'm a sinner. If otherwise, why do I need salvation if I'm, not a, if I'm not a sinner? Why do I need salvation? How often do we make mistakes? Whether with thoughts or actions. How often, my beloved? We need to acknowledge, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, I the sinner. What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see you. Before I saw everyone, and I saw everything except you, Lord, I was so preoccupied with this world and its temptations. My eyes were, were focused on the, on the pleasures and the treasures and the lustful life, a sinful life in this world. I used to go out and have fun. I traveled the world. 
I did everything under the sun my way. I chose things my way. I chose friends my way. I went to places according to my own choices. I now have realized all those years that I have wasted in this empty and vanity of all vanities, this world, I've realized it got me nowhere but absolute blindness. Absolute blindness. I thought I knew everything. I thought my eyes were opened and I was the wisest man on earth, not knowing Satan was laughing at me all along. Why? Because I lacked humility. I lacked confession of my sinful nature. I lacked it. When you read the church fathers, and so many people today claim to be Christians, yes, yet deny the church fathers. Unbelievable spiritual blindness. And I'm saying it with humility and love, but I will cry with a loud voice. Don't ever deny 2,000 year history of church fathers. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Do you think that Jesus does not love them, now he loves you? Do you think that Jesus did not reveal to them his glory, now he's revealing it to you? Who do you think you are? Who? How dare you? How boastful are you? How blind are you? Come down from your high horse and sit on the ground and put your head before the Lord and his saints, church fathers. Do not elevate yourself more than what you are worth. Church fathers who raised the dead. If you don't know, I know. Do you want me to tell you about them? Do you want me to share with you someone who lived in the third century? He, when a little kid, spiritually a little kid, comes and says, there is no saints, they're all dead. To me, this is a very childish, ignorant statement from a childish person. When are we going to grow up? When are we going to grow in stature and spirituality? We can't be Zacchaeus all the time. Don't stay short. Grow up. Grow taller, bigger. Be wise spiritually. Be mature spiritually. The Lord doesn't want you to stay at, at a kindergarten level spiritually. He wants you to graduate from university and start practicing what Christ, the good teacher, has taught you all these years. Grow up. Christ wants real men. He Christ wants wise people, mature people in his kingdom, not childish kids. No. When the Lord says, be like a little kid, he's talking about innocence, not idiocy. He's talking about innocence. Be innocent as a little kid, but you better be wise as a mature person. You can't act like a little kid. You'll destroy the world. My beloved, When you read the biographies of these saints, church fathers, saints, they are living. They raise the dead. They heal the sick. They cast out demons from people. They did absolute wonders, 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 wonders in the name of Christ. Of course, everything's through Christ, but hang on. Who chose them? Jesus. And we do not listen to them and we do not acknowledge them. What Christ has chosen, how dare I reject? I'm rejecting Christ. Do you see the grievousness in this? So the Lord chose these people and he, he, and he did wonders through them and they were faithful to the Lord and loyal. 
Come and listen to them, those who raised the dead, those who did absolute wonderful and magnificent and glorious things on earth and after leaving earth. They still do wonders after leaving earth. But when you read their biography, as long as they lived on earth, what were they saying all their time, all the time in their prayers? Lord, have mercy on me, I the sinner. You just raised the dead. Yes, but I am a sinner. It is the grace of the Lord. It is the love of the Lord. It is the mercy of the Lord Jesus that worked through this sinner. I am nothing. It is Christ. They always, always humbled themselves. They never wanted to gain no credit for everything that was done because whatever was done in them and through them and by them was done by the almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth. When they lived this life of humility, the Lord made them grow in spirituality and reach levels we can't even dream of. We cannot even dream of. Read their biographies and learn from these magnificent men that walked on the face of this earth. The saints who always live. Stop living for the world. Start living for the Lord. Stop doing things your way. Start doing things the Lord's way. Stop being stubborn about everything that is to do with you. Let go of you and say, Lord, make me, break me and make me. Shape me and mold me the way you want me to be, not the way I want, not the way I choose. You choose for me, Lord. I want to gain my sight to see you. I want from this moment onward to live for you. I've lived for myself. I've lived in this world my way. Where did I end up? In the pig's field, in the, in, the, in the heart of filth. When I did it my way, I ended up in hell. Absolute destruction, absolute lostness. There is nothing to see anymore. I'm lost, Lord. Have mercy on me, son of David. This time, I don't want to see no one but you. I don't want to see nothing but you, Lord. Let my spiritual eye be opened to see you, Lord. I want to live for you. I've had enough. I've had enough, Lord. And you know what? A time, when a time comes in our life, where we've had enough you know some people learn the hard way some people come easy some people come after a million smacks by the Lord you see the Lord has been calling you nicely I reject him the Lord started raising his voice I reject him the Lord started yelling I reject him the Lord will twist my ear I still reject him he twists my hand I still reject him he start pinching me I still reject him He'll break me. He'll break me. All of a sudden, something went very wrong in my life. Everything was okay. I lost everything. And then you start saying, but why? How come? What happened? What have I done? Excuse me. Christ has been calling you all these long years. Where are you from Christ? You were blind. But you see, when we try everything, thinking that we can make it, and then we realize we have failed miserably, when we come to this realization ourselves, because when we are stubborn, we are, we're not going to receive no advice from no one. We're not going to accept it because the me that is in me is so powerful, it cannot bow to no one's advice. But when Christ breaks me, I'll realize that I have failed so miserably. I have no other choice 
but to cry out to Jesus, son of David, and say, have mercy on me, because I realize there is no other way but him. You see, when that moment is reached in any one of us life, I'll cry out and I will never stop crying out to the Lord until he stops and calls me to him. You see, those people who were around the Lord rebuked that blind man and said, hey, stop crying out, be quiet. And this is Satan speaking through these people. Do not be upset of people going against you. Do not be angry with them when they say to you, be quiet. It is Satan speaking through them to hinder you from reaching to Christ. Don't give up. The blind man, when he, they said to him, be quiet, don't cry out to Jesus. What does the Holy Bible say? He cried out the more. Listen, guys, I don't care who you are and what you are. You are not the center of my focus. You are not the center of my attention as you used to be before. You see, before my friend used to call me, I would run. Before my cousin would call me, I would run. Before my brother would call me, I would run. Enough. Enough. I'm running for no one, no more. I will only run when Jesus is passing by. And this time, no one will shut me up. If all hell breaks loose, I give no one penny. Nothing will shut me. Enough is enough. I've lived all these years in vanity. Today is the turning point from everything that is of this world. Be quiet, man. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. We said be quiet. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. No one is going to shut me up until I stop him. Because today, this moment, I've realized this. And this is the truth and the truthful moment. Without Jesus, I'm dead. I'm blind. I woke up finally. When you call him in this way, for the first time in your life, you have tasted this prayer in an absolute, total, different way than all the ease of prayers. This prayer was so different. I felt every, everything of it. I lived everything I said. I was so focused on every word that was being uttered from my mouth. For the first time ever, I am so focused on what I'm asking and what I'm seeking. I am 100% focused. I know what I want. I want Jesus. When you come to this realization, Jesus will stop as I call him. Lord, there are thousands of people shouting to you. He says, I, I only hear the cry of the heart, not of the lip. Let there be millions and billions shouting but when one of you calls me from their heart, I am all ease. Because my ear hears not the lip service, it hears the cry of the heart. Because the lips can falsify and twist things and act. The heart never lies. The heart cannot lie. And when you pray from the heart, the first thing starts happening, tears will start shedding coming down from your eyes. You know why tears come from the eyes? Because now you're, pray, you're praying from the heart. No longer it's a lip service. You truly living what you're saying. You truly meaning what you're saying. That is why you're crying. Because the heart is like the well of water. You bring the water from below. The water is deep. You need to dig deep to get the clean, pure water. 
The shallow water is not clean, it's not pure. You need to dig deep. To get the sweet water, you gotta dig deep. You tell me shut up, I'll scream louder. Zacchaeus short climbed up on a tree. I ask you, my beloveds, who climbs on the tree and jumps? The monkey. Look at monkeys, swinging from one branch to the other. They climb and go and jump and come. They would have made fun. This man is mature. An adult acting like a monkey. An adult acting like a kid. Probably people would have made fun of him, ridiculed him, told him off, laughed at him. I don't care. You see, before I used to focus, all my focus was on what people think of me, how people see me. Everything to me was people. That's why I was so careful in actually stepping and going forward and going here and there and everywhere. To me, people was, were, was everything. What do, they, what do people say about me? How do they perceive me? How do they look at me? I did things to please people. I threw in a party, cost me thousands of dollars, and I don't have a penny in the bank account. I borrowed it from Centrelink to throw in a party just to please people. I invited people so that I am seen beautiful in their eyes. Can you? for a change in your life stop pleasing people and start pleasing the lord can you stop thinking about what people think of you and start thinking how p how jesus is looking at you and thinking of you i climbed on the tree people made fun of me ridiculed me told me off laughed at me and they said look at this sick in the head he's acting like a monkey well so be it people let me be a monkey as long as I am in the bosom of Christ. Who cares whether I'm a monkey or not? Who cares? I'm not letting go of Jesus passing by. So I'll be a monkey to bring his attention to me and says to me, come down swiftly. I'm going to come to your house. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what? If we do not, if we do not rise to the occasion, if we do not grow spiritually, we will always be that blind, short in stature human being because our focus is on this world. This world will give you nothing but blindness and shortness of stature. You need to elevate yourself, rise up my child and lift yourself up by the grace of the almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let all the people ridicule you. Let all the people go against you. Let all the people hate you and say he is a blasphemer. He is a condemner. He is a racist, a sexist, whatever it is. Let them say, I don't care. I want to meet Jesus today. I want to meet him today. Let government hate me. Let the entire church leaders hate me. I want Jesus. Therefore, truth cannot be compromised to please people in the church and outside the church. The truth must be said. Let the Pope go against me and stop me. Fine, but I will say the truth. I'm not gonna speak in a politically correct way just because I'm pleasing this and that and so and so. That is not the case with me. Not because I'm good, because I am really bad. I need the good God to make me good in Him. People are good for nothing. They can't be good for themselves in order to be good for me. Only the good God is good for those who seek his goodness.
Let them ridicule. Let them persecute. I will not open the church for vaccination hub. Oh, that's an old story anyway. But I had to rub it in. You know, like that. Rub it in, rub it in. Rap is now good. Listen, my beloveds. You cannot live in the world and in the church. You cannot sing for Christ and sing for the devil. You need to wake up. I will not tolerate for someone to come here and go to the club. I will not accept that in the house of the Lord. You're either in the church or in the club. Choose. You can't be in both. You're either with the Lord or with Satan. You can't be with both. You cannot. Choose the Lord to live. And if you choose Satan, definitely you're dead. So away with you, Satan. In Jesus' mighty name, away with you. You go to hell where you belong. I belong to my heavenly Father. I am the Son of God by the grace of the only beloved Son of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You must choose. You can't be that rocking boat. One's right, one the other left. Right, left. You need to stay either right or left. The two together never work. I'm going to be very firm going forward. Anybody that wants to work in this church must serve the Lord Jesus and Jesus only. You can't serve two masters, one only. Either Christ or your false God, which is you. Which is the me, the I am in me. That is the false God. The Lord is the only way when you let him work in your life, next time you go out, it'll be different. Next time you have lunch somewhere, it'll be different. Next time you mix with people, it'll be different. See, when the Lord opens your spiritual eye, everything becomes different. It's a new beginning to everything. Because you've never experienced this level before. That's why my advice to all of us, when a church father says something, the children must listen and obey because there are times he cannot explain everything for one simple reason, because even if he explains, you are not at a level for you to understand where he's saying and where he's coming from. Therefore, you must obey and accept as it is, stop arguing, stop questioning, stop saying prove it so I can believe. You must take it as it is because you are not spiritually at the level for you to comprehend it from the word go. Believe you me, what is happening in the world and also in the church is very funny. There are some church leaders, I'm not judging. I'm talking about myself. I'm a church, one of the, I'm one of the church leaders, so I'm not judging. I can talk. <laughs> Maybe you can't, but I can, because I'm talking about myself. You're not a church leader, but I am. There are some church leaders, I'm not sure if they're blind or they're blind. It's either one of the two. And when I say church leaders, I'm talking about Catholic and Orthodox. To me, these are church leaders, Catholic and Orthodox. There is a lot of things that need to change 
Otherwise, we will have to answer to the Lord Jesus. What are we teaching at our Christian schools? What are we allowing to be taught in our Christian schools? Has money blinded us? Where is Christ? And His church? Where is Christ? A time will come you will be persecuted for his name's sake. Are you willing to last the race? Are you willing to go through persecution? Or are you going to say, well, in the name of love, we have to be much kinder and nicer? No. Love is not always kind and nice. Love is very blunt and straightforward, sharper than a double-edged sword. Love is like fire. It will devour everything that comes in its way. Love speaks the truth. Love does not lie and twist and falsify the truth. Love is not a hypocrite. Love is not a hypocrite. We need to ask the Lord to open our spiritual eyes to start changing. We need to change. We need to be different because we belong to the Lord. The world is very, is behaving in a very childish way. Very childish. Very childish, my beloveds. Very childish, my goodness. But the the saddest part of all, when the church begins to behave in a childish way. That was never meant to be the case. Was never meant to be the case. A priest in Chicago, I want name with church. He called two men to give a sermon because it was Father's Day, two men to come up on the altar and give a sermon from the Holy Gospel. And this priest, the smile never left his face. So next time, put that big rainbow flag on the church. You idiot! You Judas Iscariot sold your master with 30 pieces of silver. Where is your hierarchy? A bigger idiot than you. And a bigger loss than you. And a blind one than you. Where is your hierarchy? To allow such nonsense behavior from a Christian priest. What has become of this world? Very childish. Very blind. Very blind. We need to have a true encounter with the Lord Jesus. Ask. Say, Lord, I don't want nothing but you. I'm not going to ask you who to marry, what to buy, what to build, what kind of business. I, I don't, I'm not going to ask you none of that. I want one thing, Lord. I want you. I don't care. I'm a bishop. I'm a pope. I'm a patriarch. I don't care. I don't care, I have a throne, I'm in the street, I don't care. 
I don't care I'm exalted, I'm humiliated, I don't care. I don't care I'm accepted, I'm rejected, I'm, I'm dragged in the streets. I don't care, not, none of it matters. I don't care I have a church or I don't have a church. I'm living in the gutter. I really don't care if I go to hell or to heaven. None of it matters. I focus on neither heaven nor hell nor nothing. I want one thing. I want to see you, Jesus. That's all I want. And no one will make me be quiet until Jesus says, call him to me. I will never let go. I want to see Jesus. Don't let a day go by unless you are stubborn about this request. Lord, I want to see you. Don't. And choose the Lord, even if you lose everything. Choose the Lord. See, it all starts with a small thing, ends up with a very big thing. We have a church hall, so some churches do this. We have a church hall, okay, let's, let's throw in a party in there. You know what? What attracts people? Music, party, eating, dancing. Okay, but we, we need to do a fundraiser, right? So what do we do? We're gonna do something that makes, happy, makes people happy. And when people are happy, they dig into their pockets and we're gonna do a fundraiser. Why? Because we want to build a church. Oh my goodness, how blind and little kids we are. Which church are you building? Are you talking about the church of Christ? Do you realize how blind we are? Jesus Christ, his treasury never ceases, never ends. Before he made us humans, he put in the heart of the ocean pearls and in the heart of the land, earth, gold. This Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who has the wealth of heaven and earth, do you think he needs you to throw in a party and dance and drink and jump up and down and do wrong things in the house of the Lord to do a fundraiser for the Lord for the Lord's house I cannot fathom how much more blind can we be where is the power of the Holy Spirit that will make an earthquake in people Make them run to the Lord and beg him, Lord, here's this money, you do whatever you want. Do you think Jesus cannot touch the hearts of people unless I throw in a party? Our youth, we need to gather them, so are we going to bring a DJ? I'll break that, whatever it's called, on your head and the DJ's head. This is the house of the Lord. This is where you bow your head before him and worship him. Until when are we going to stay blind? Oh, I need to befriend so-and-so minister and a premier and a prime minister I need to look good so you know what I'm gonna polish myself and I'm gonna polish what I say so that way it is all beautiful it is eloquent speeches and it's actually painting a beautiful picture to Mr. so-and-so and professor so-and-so you know what that prime minister and that premier and whoever it is in government they don't come and beg Jesus Christ for mercy I don't know who they are I don't need them I don't need their money I don't need their position Jesus will move mountains for me where is your faith and because of this nonsense Freemason infiltrated the church to the core Oh.
Freemason. This is not my talk. This is the Lord. And the Lord is very aware of it. And he knows there are some, some clergymen in a very high level are Freemason to the, to the core. From outside, they dressed up in a, in, a, in a sheep outfit. From inside, they are vicious wolves selling Jesus Christ for the sake of money. Judas Iscariot. One, it was one Judas Iscariot at the time of the Lord. Now there are millions. Who do, you, who do you kill? No, you can't, mate. Even if you start killing, you won't have the time to kill them all. They've sold the Lord. But they think they've sold the Lord. <laughs> the Lord is laughing. He will pluck them from their roots one by one. Even if they are a pope, they will be plugged. When the time of the Lord comes, no one stands in his way. But the Lord is coming. Go on the tree and act weird and be crazy to get Jesus' attention. Don't let Jesus pass you by. You better stop him and make sure that he calls you to him and says, what can I do for you? Lord, when he asks you, what can I do for you? Say, Lord, I don't want nothing. I want you. Let's bow our heads. May the Lord have mercy on all of us. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, whose grace and mercy is poured upon all. Pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants, and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes, and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace, and instill the works of their behavior and the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith in the adoption as your children and in the joy of your, of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will, to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you. May the Lord Jesus guide you and protect you. May the Lord Jesus enlighten you, enlighten your hearts, your souls, your minds, your entire being. May the Lord Jesus restore your spiritual eye back to absolute perfection where you begin to see the Lord and see His will being done in you as it is done in heaven. Allow Jesus to be enlightened in you. Allow Jesus to be grown in you allow Jesus to make you grow and reach a perfect height in that spiritual life let Christ the King let Christ the Messiah let Christ God revealed in the flesh be your Savior your Lord your way the truth and the life let him mold you shape you and do as he pleases allow him my beloved allow him allow him may the lord jesus bless you guide you and protect you always i love you but jesus loves you the most <laughs>